Hey everybody, I'm super grateful for Natasha and the, the women's unity movement um, and for, for wanting to get me involved to share my story um, about mental health um, and my journey um, in being challenged with my mind, really, because everybody is mentally challenged and everybody deserves mental health and everybody has the power to be mentally healthy. Um, obviously the physical health and the mental health are are working together, but it's my puppy making noise. Um, so it's been quite a journey, you know, from memories in the childhood, feelings from the childhood, uh, into, you know, becoming a teenager, into becoming an adult. I happen to be an adult. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, it's been a it's been a blessing with all the challenges that I've been through. So, um, yeah, I think that's a great way to look at it. Is is you go through challenges, right? And and they reflect as mental challenges because we can all be mentally challenged. Um, it doesn't just go for specific people. It doesn't go for people that believe in their challenge. Um, or people that don't believe in their challenge. The fact is that we do get challenged as individuals. We get challenged on a personal level. We get challenged in, the, in our communities and we also get challenged in our ideas, our, our energy, our consciousness, questions, things. <clears throat> so I have, I'll tell you I've, what I've struggled with and what I am still struggling with. Because um, all of my struggles is, is, not, is not all of a sudden completely gone. You know, um, but I've learned to cope with, I've learned to cope with stress in a, in a different way. When I look back into my early childhood, I, it's been really, really a blessing. You know, I would say I was, I was raised, um, in a, in a wealthy family, um, with not so much to worry about until I came to my teenage years that the money wealth part of the family got challenged, right? And then I got to move countries, moved from um, Turkey, Istanbul to um, Orange County, California, which obviously changed things up for me. And I also experienced my family go through a big shift within themselves as individuals and as a whole family that we were going through a big shift, moving to a different country, having financial problems, starting a new business. Um, now I'm experiencing all these all these fights and drama and trauma that, that basically money has caused um, or the idea of money, or 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 I think the idea of trying to control the money has, is, it causes stress for for the human being. Um, later on, I got to find find martial arts and and meditation and Kundalini yoga, and I was able to really um, tune into myself and and deal with my my emotions and my my challenges. Um, that happened around the age, I believe, 16, 17 years old. I was ready to okay. I need to, I need to address my my addictions. I need to address my my emotional reactions. I need to address um, how I how I approach my life completely, right? So it was cool to um, really give myself and my energy to to martial art, which was jiu-jitsu at the time, uh, to heal my my. I would say sexual trauma and addictions. Um, I really wanted to, and I uh, and I think that also also reflected as anger and frustration. So I am I'm super grateful for for Jiu Jitsu for really um, transforming me, allowing me to transform myself. Um, I'm I'm forever grateful for that. Later on, I got to question who I am with and who 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 is valuing the same things I'm valuing in life. Because it doesn't really make sense to force ourselves in in any way or with with anybody for any reason, right? So there's so many people here, here in this world and everyone's going through a unique process and everyone's questioning things differently. Um, so you get to find your tribe, you get to find what kind of people you do what kind of things with. And I think this really helped me with, with um, my mental health, because now I, w I wouldn't have expectations of of somebody for something that they wouldn't provide me or, or anything like that. So I think it's important to have expectations. 
in the sense of, yeah, you know what I mean? I expect my friend to be my friend, um, whatever that detail is. But then it's up to you to choose all your boundaries. It's up to you to choose all your friends. So when it comes to being mentally healthy, it's really about self-love and self-care and pouring that attention and energy that you want from the outside world, whether it's a person or an idea or a business or whatever it is, that you give that to yourself. You give that to yourself first so that you feel complete and holy, right? Being in command of your nine holes, what goes in your holes, what goes out your holes. You're in charge of it, whether it's the ears, the nose, the mouth, whatever it is. Um, because because you're in complete charge of, of that body. You're in complete charge of that, of the, um, of the mental projections you have, right? You have so many thoughts per minute so many thoughts per blink of an eye but you cannot process all of them so you have to have the strength ability to let the thoughts come and go and you observe and you observe and you observe and you observe and the, the more you can handle the more you can pick out right but this is really this is really the key is 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 having a developing a meditative mind because when you develop a meditative mind then all of a sudden you're in bliss, all of a sudden things are peaceful, all of a sudden you got nothing to worry about, all of a sudden the challenges and the struggles that your mind was going through isn't going through it right now, because right now you feel happy, right now you feel good, right now you have the right to be happy. So having the strength and the courage to step into that power and say, I, I can be feeling good right now, no matter what, no matter what. And I would say right now, where I'm at with my mental health is, um, is definitely really far away from where I was at. Um, when I was a kid and where I was at when I was a teenager or where I was at two months ago before the pandemic, right? Um, so I, as you can see, I got my, got my little camper here. Uh, I'm traveling. I'm in Texas right now. Drove from California to Florida, New Mexico to Texas. Um, really doing what's easy for me. I don't think, I don't think you're getting a car and traveling the world is not going to make anybody a lot uh, mentally healthier or happier. But what it can do is it can give you time to get to know. It can give you time to uh, recover and heal. So it's important to first learn what's causing your troubles. See it. It's important to poke and provoke yourself because you have to point fingers at yourself before you point fingers at the problems you think are. First, you point the fingers at yourself. How will I address this problem? I am responsible for feeling this way. And then the second is you got to elevate yourself. You got to learn how to elevate yourself. You got to learn how to how to take yourself from a state of being some sort of a miserable state. It could be anger, it could be any emotions that you're being challenged with. And you have to learn what's causing that so you can uplift yourself, right? And 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 that upliftment part can vary. Right? I don't I don't suggest drugs. <laughs> Although, although um, in the short term you might get an escape, but in the long run, they don't, they don't really support you. So I think self-upliftment comes from uh, understanding how our breath works, understanding how our, what our body likes, and understanding how to, how to decrease stress by increasing vitality in your body. These are the things I've learned from Kundalini Yoga that's really helped me out to this day. And then I, yeah, I can't, I can't thank enough to all the masters that came before me, all my um, jiu-jitsu teachers and all, the, all their teachers and all of their teachers and all my yoga teachers and all of their teachers and all of their teachers and understanding this and having gratitude towards uh, the, the privilege that I have to be able to practice these teachings, the privilege that I have to be able to, oh my God, I am mentally challenged and I can do something about it. I can address address my life the way I deserve it, you know? Give my life, give my experience what it needs. It's really up to me to do that. So I'm, again, thank you, Natasha. Thank you, Women's Unity Movement. I do, um, I do believe, you know, I mean, everything I've talked about is, is definitely just very universal and it can go with go for anyone i just shared my mental processes but when it comes to women in this world wow you know like being a woman it must be such a different experience than being a man 
from what I'm what I've noticed. Um, at the same time, I'm learning that the the ability that the women have to heal, the ability that the women have to care and to serve, is just beyond uh, my comprehension. So, yeah, I'm just in awe when it comes to the the idea of being woman and all the all the women's empowerment. Uh, movements that are happening around the world it's just like we can't even imagine how good the world is going to be once the women really access and and express their potential for all of us thank you